We continue the conversation here on The Breakfast with a look at the headlines in the papers this morning with the help of Aisha, Aisha Yusufu, I beg your pardon, uh, the co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls group. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. All right, we will be joined a little later by Gbolaho Olojade. We'll let you know as soon as he connects. So we'll start now with the Guardian newspaper. Stop protests and pain, Buhari tells Nigerian youths. President silent on lucky killings. U.S. Councillor meets Oshibanjo, condemns military force. Southwest senators want end to violence. Speech so uninspiring, online critics say. Uh, that's uh, the big one on the Guardian newspaper. Uh, just minute, there's a picture of um, the chief of defense staff on the front page with his mask on, uh, complying with uh, COVID-19 uh, protocols. Uh, moving on, underneath, we see a lawyer's kick as hoodlums invade, loot, burn Lagos court. INEC postpones by-elections in 11 states. UN, EU, Biden, others condemn killing of protesters, seek action. Delta imposes 48-hour curfew over NSAR's protests as Edo reviews order. Over to you, Aisha. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, uh, first of all, I think I don't understand the, the headline that says they stop protests. Uh, the president is paying. There was no, there's nothing... I, maybe I would, we, we listened to different presidents, or I, I read about a different president. There was that wasn't really there. We did, I, I didn't get that feeling. Uh, for the president, what we got more like was a subtle threat, and uh, you know, coming out to say that oh, uh, people took uh, his uh, the admittance to do to, to the demands that as as weakness. And I think for me that was just a threat. Sadly, he never mentioned any death. He never consoled. Uh, any of the parents uh, that had lost their children uh, seems as if uh, there's none of that. Seems as if uh, there's none of that uh, coming uh, for the president. And and most importantly, also none of the deaths that had happened in in other parts of Nigeria was mentioned. About 20, 20 people were reported to have been killed in Zafara. Said, uh, but sadly, we didn't get that uh, from the from the president. And so it it was just uh, it, it, something like uh, of a subtle threat. Uh, there was no empathy. There was nothing there. But then uh, the president doesn't have capacity for empathy. He has repeatedly shown that. He has repeatedly shown his indifference and disdain uh, to the Nigerian people, had never cared whether people died or not. And so for me, it, it's a normal speech that, that, that is expected uh, from, that we've come to expect from him. The most important thing that I think uh, the youth need to understand is that from the speech, you could see that really he didn't want to come out and talk, but they have shown that with their voices, they can always make the government do what they want to do. And they should never forget that. All right. Um, let's look at the part about uh, the lawyers kicking as uh, hoodlums invade, loot, burn, Lagos court. We know that's not the only uh, place that uh, got burned yesterday. A lot more places, uh, media house uh, got touched uh, some parts. Um, we also know that um, police stations... Uh, Kakofi, um, palliatives was looted, and so many other issues. Um, what's your reaction to all of these? Well, my reaction to all of that is to say government really should be ashamed of itself and was it was ready to destroy its own country just to be able to make uh, to make a few points or come at peaceful protesters. Uh, why does I say this with all sense of responsibility? Because we have the video; videos are all over the place, and we where you see police. Uh, police vehicles transporting these hoodlums, uh, government vehicles transporting these hoodlums, uh, army military vehicles transporting these hoodlums, uh, hoodlums under the supervision of security agents. And first of all, what they did was that they came at uh, peaceful protesters. And Nigerians looked the other way as usual. Some even blamed the protesters when hoodlums were brought in to attack them, destroy their properties. In Abuja here, they destroyed a lot of cars. Cars were burned. Hoodlums were brought in for, for almost from all over, out of Abuja in lorries and trucks and we brought in and now the hoodlums turned against the 20 people that brought them in and they started attacking and it just goes to show that the same people because they use uh, hoodlums uh, to, to, to suppress people during election and ensure that people don't come out to vote and they're able to perpetrate themselves in power that's the same thing they also use uh, uh, during protests and I, and I 
want and I said it categorically to people that hoodlums did not infiltrate uh, the NSAS movement or join the or become or join the NSAS protest. It was hoodlums that were brought in by government to 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 attack the NSAS uh, protesters that now turned on the state on the very people that brought them in. All right, I understand we have uh, Gbolaho Olojede join us now. Uh, he is a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. All right, hey, uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's our pleasure. You're welcome. Uh, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper. Uh, the big one here is uh, President's Broadcast. Nigerians attack Buhari for snobbing lucky shooting, looting, killings continue. President's broadcast empty, devoid of leadership qualities, says African Bar Association. Speech lacks empathy, emotion, shut off expectation, contains gaps. Uh, that's um, NSAR's protesters' sands. There is a picture of the situation yesterday, massive looting and... Um, uh, that's it. Uh, it's the picture. It's uh, self-explanatory. Uh, we also have the one that says, Norton Gov's condemn attack on NSAS protesters, demand probe. ICPC arraigns Edo rep for alleged 1.6 million naira bribe. Can demand probe of trigger happy soldiers compensation. We also have... Um, Beside the picture of the IGP, lawlessness continues as hoodlums kill cops, burn more police stations, inmates attempt jailbreak. INEC postpones Lagos, Imobayas, other by-elections, and of course, hoodlums overrun customs men, flood Ogun with contraband. Um, Balaho, let's come to you. Uh, this one on the lawlessness continues as hoodlums kill cops, burn more police station inmates, attempt a jailbreak. Uh, you can start with um, which, um, whatever that caught your attention first and then come to that. Oh, well, I, I can as well start with that. Um, what has happened over the last uh, few days in Lagos? I'm not, I'm not proud of Nigeria, actually, just that Lagos was particularly horrendous. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's horrible, it's disgraceful, it's shameful. Because what we had was an agitation for something that makes sense. And SARS, the SARS oppression and all the other things around it. Very laudable idea. And it was moving well until it was hijacked. The hijacking, um, honestly, I, I'm sure you also know one or two people who are part of a, a SARS protest. I, I probably know like 20, but I can assure you that not one of those 20 that I knew was part of the of the carnage and the massive destruction and looting that has happened over the last couple of days. So it was clear that it was 100% hijacking of the initial intentions of that protest. Now, I, I, I believe we need to... How did we get there? There was a trigger, uh, which, which was the, the military uh, uh, coming into that space and the issue of shooting at the gate at protesters that were non-violent at that, at that lefty gate. That, that was probably the, the trigger. But then it has now metamorphosed into a whole lot of things that we cannot even begin to explain. Nobody can explain what happened in Bode Bode Thomas as a protest, as, as, as a, as a protest for, for NSAT. No, what happened in all the other places? No, attempt to, say, to send a, a people in prison free as part of the protest that is NSAT. Nobody could appreciate all of that. But I'm just hoping, and I want to believe, that by today we'll begin to restore uh, Lagos and other parts of Nigeria mm -hmm. to what it should be. There is no environment in modern history where this is how things got solved. I, black, black lives matter. So after the violence, as black lives started mattering in, in, in America today, or after the violence of France, as the dichotomy between the Caucasian and the North African immigrants, has it been fixed? After we have made peaceful protests, we must be able to now execute the yield 
of that faithful protest and not allow it to degenerate into the last couple of days. The last couple of days in Lagos is not what NSAS was about. It's not what the youth want. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the original intention of the, of, of, of the protest. Well, what do you make of the president's broadcast that's captured uh, in the front um, as the big one here? President's broadcast, the Nigerians attack Buhari for snobbing, lucky shooting, looting, killing, continue. By the time he finished that broadcast, I was still waiting, hoping that, uh, okay, maybe we have not got into the meat of the, of the issue. It was absolutely empty. There was nothing in it that we don't already know. There was absolutely nothing. Even, even the common um, commiseration with families who have lost lives and uh, who have lost dear ones, who have lost property. Did you see the carnage in Lagos? There was no single mention of, you know, associating with what those people must have been passing through by virtue of the failure of government to secure its people and secure the nation and secure Lagos. It is, it is a failure to secure the people. That was why people's lives were lost in the manner they were lost. That was why people lost their means of life in, 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 in the last couple of days. And there was no mention of commiserating or having condoling with this. It did not happen. Apart from that, people were looking for comforting things that would say that, okay, uh, the destruction in Lagos has come to an end. You know, these are the steps that will be taken. These are nothing, zilch. Nothing was said in that. Absolutely, some people believe that, well, maybe we should read in between the lines, that uh, it is more of what was not said and not what was said. What was said was absolutely zero. All right, let, let's bring maybe in... what was not said was the fact that uh, we're going to now be firm on security issues. Uh, no, 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 nobody should go out there and continue all those kind of... Maybe those were said in body language. But as far as the actual content... That was spoken, was concerned, it was zero. All right, uh, let's bring in Aisha again. Uh, still on the Punch newspaper, there's this story I'd like your thoughts on. Ohaneze decries attempts to pit Yoruba against Igbo in Lagos. Uh, we also have Buhari and I have not spoken since Lagos mayhem. Uh, that's Sonu. And then FG Asu disagree on payment platform for 30 billion naira allowances. Uh, there's a story on pension, total pension assets rise to 11.35 trillion naira. I want to take your thoughts quickly on the Ohaneze decries attempts to pit Yoruba against Imo in Lagos. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, before I go that, I, I want to say something that I had said earlier and wishes to say that. Uh, there was no hijack of the NSAS movement, neither were uh, protesters joined. What happened was that government had brought in hoodlums, and we all watched why government, even in Lagos, they were, uh, uh, state bosses were used to transport them, and they came and they attacked the, uh, the protesters. What happened, the, the hoodlums that were brought in by government, we, we, we have video evidences all over the place of police bringing in these hoodlums, military vans used to bring in those hoodlums, and at the end of the day, they turned rogue. So let nobody associate NSAS protests with, uh, with, the, with the mayhem that happened in Lagos and every other place where it happened. The NSAS protests also were victims, their properties were destroyed, Nigerians as usual looked the other way, they didn't call the government in, and this, in Lagos, we remember during COVID-19, how a lot of people, there were these gangs that were going about attacking people and all of that. And with all of that, yet the government was ready to bring in hoodlums like they did. Also in Abuja, the same thing happened. This is part of what happened with the government that we have and the politicians we have. They will use everything. They use the military, they use the police, they use hoodlums, and then the next thing is ethnic, uh, uh, ethno-religious sentiments that they will bring in to pitch one, one tribe against the other. Because in this way, this is how they are able to divide citizens. This is how they are able to cause confusion. This is how they are able to balkanize Nigeria. And then instead of us fighting the common issues that we have, we begin to fight ourselves. And so th that's normally the, the way, the mode of oppression uh, that we have from those that we are, that are in authority and also the politicians that we have. And I think Nigerians should be wise to that. One of the things we need to understand, as Nigeria, I know as Nigerians, we are used to blaming victims rather than the perpetrator. The government is responsible for the 
explicitly, absolutely for the mayhem that happened. We had protesters who were peaceful, who did everything, who even cleaned after themselves. When they were denied everything, including medical care, including security, what did they do? They started, they went off to get their own private uh, security and all of that just to protect themselves. Even when hoodlums were attacking them, they didn't retaliate. They were able to apprehend some of them and hand it over to the police. The police did nothing. Where were the uh, 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 state authority when all of this uh, may mayhem were, were, were going on? When the cars of protesters were being bought? When protesters were being attacked? Where were the state authority? What happened to Nigerians? They all keep quiet. They all kept quiet. So please, I just need to say, let nobody associate the hoodlums and whatever that happened to the protesters. They had nothing. It's the same protest uh, hoodlums that they use during the election to ensure that people stay away and do not come to 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 to, to where they they will vote and they perpetuate themselves in office. It's the same hoodlums that they're doing now to ensure that people do not protest and 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 let their grievances be known at the way that it is constitutionally allowed. All right, let's uh, go to uh, see what we can take with the business day and then we'll wrap things up. Um, business day has this one that says, NSAS, outrage, humor, trail President Buhari's speech. Uh, it has uh, one rider, ask international community to get facts before judgment. There's a little bit of money matters there. NSAS, economy takes hit as crisis grounds businesses. Underneath, you see... Rather, inside, you see auditors expose bankruptcy risk facing NNPC as commercial entity. Reasons emerging economies should prioritize SME's growth development. Um, well, I'll over to you. Which of these uh, would you want to speak on? Yeah, the, the, the economic part of things, Nigeria, incidentally, is a very funny place. Um, you know, you know, the stock market went bullish yesterday. Um, and, 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 and you are asking yourself, how could the stock market go bullish when Lagos has witnessed the most horrendous uh, 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 destruction in my entire adult life? I've never seen what happened in the last two days. Ago. But in the midst of that, the, the Nigeria stock exchange was, uh, was, uh, went, went, went bullish. We... We have very great privilege, which, which we have uh, not maximized. Um, you know, COVID, I was speaking with a friend in Florida yesterday. He said for the past eight months, they have not, he has not gone out because he was scared of COVID. And the only thing he had done is maybe take a walk around their house and, or, 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 or buy. We have a Nigeria that has not slumped under the weight of COVID the way some of these countries have. But we are still not able to convert that into building our economy. Rather, we're we on the destructive part of our economy. The, 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 the event of the last few days would definitely set us back. And it is not just government that it will set back, it will set private organizations back. Some people's entire 15, 20 years livelihood that they have built have been wiped off. Insurance companies are going to be in serious trouble for all the uh, 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 things that they have been sure that have now been destroyed or plundered. So um, the event will slow our growth down significantly. I, I, I just hope that the miners of this economy will sit up and realize that fact and be able to intervene where necessary to ensure that we can get things back on track. All right, uh, let's come to you, uh, Aisha. Uh, I wanted to speak on the humor part of it uh, as a coping mechanism here in Nigeria. Um, you could see moments after the speech, you could see some, you know, some comments uh, that even in spite of the displeasure being expressed, you, you would be compelled to laugh out loud. Um, what's your take about this humor trail President Buhari's speech? Do we still have you, Aisha? Okay, I think we probably uh, have lost her. Um, Golaho, speak on that, please. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's one of those things. I think we are very I, good I mean, you, you said it. Oh, okay. We thought we, made, we lost you there for a bit, Aisha. Well, go ahead. Golaho, yeah. just hold on, please. Okay, thank okay. you. 
Uh, so, like I said, you said it's all, it, it's all about uh, uh, coping, it's a coping mechanism, and uh, we are in an abused relationship, uh, we are in an abusive relationship with our government, and so what abused people normally do is to find anything that they can use to cope, and Nigerians use humor a lot, uh, they focus on other things, they focus on inanity sometimes, they major in the minor so that they'll be able to take their minds away from the, the things that, that are really happening, and, and that's basically what that humor is it's, it's all about. In the the case of uh, the economy, yeah, the economy will take a hit. For me, uh, I, maybe because I grew up in Kano, uh, grew, being born and brought up in, in Kano, I, I, I grew up knowing that sometimes mayhem just happened. One minute, everything is fine. The next minute, oh, two people were fighting. Then it becomes an edged, a religious crisis. There's, there's riot, you know, killings, looting, plundering. I grew up in a place where uh, people will say to you, teenagers and young adults, as of that time, will say to you, please, can you borrow me 300 naira? I will pay you the next riot. So there were people who lived for riots and people who lived for where they can now go in and, 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 and plunder and loot things. And after COVID-19 happened, a lot of reports came out that said that there's going to be a lot of unrest. Many people have lost their means of livelihood. Many people have nothing. And you think seemingly normal people that ordinarily will never think we take part in things like looting. They will. And so so maybe the Lagos State don't know this, and, and I wonder how did they get to the part, and I'll still repeat this, that the government decided to bring in talks, hoodlums, to come and attack peaceful protesters. These are some of the results. These are some of the things that our right. government should be learning from. It, be, before they do anything, they should think about the repercussion of things that happen. Sad a lot. And sometimes, some people never, ever recover from this uh, riot. Uh, like Bola Bo said, their whole means of livelihood is taken away. And most people in Nigeria don't even insure their, their things anyway, their properties, their shops. And you find some, some, for some, this is, going, this is going to be the end. But I think government All needs right. to take responsibility and ensure that things like this never ever happen again in the history of Nigeria. We should never forget. Right now, they're trying to even obliterate the fact that people were killed at Lekki, people that died. It's, we shouldn't get to that. Let's just say right. never again should we ever allow things like this uh, to happen in our country. All right, Aisha. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Golaho, your final thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I, I think Aisha has, uh, has captured it rightly. Um, the, the Nigerians have this coping mechanism. We, we get creative in, in cartoons and in, in, in the things that we fill the social media with just to be able to um, calm down in, in court. And there were a whole lot of that uh, on the air about the president's speech yesterday. Uh, I, I, I'm sure you saw some of that. Too. <laughs> I did. I did. We have to rebuild after the disaster of what has happened over the last few days, like, like I just said. And the government and individuals, all of us have a role to play in this. But more importantly, like she said, we must tell ourselves that never should we find ourselves in this position again. Never. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Aisha and Bulaho, for joining us this morning on The Breakfast. Thank you for having us.